Hey everybody, welcome to a, another bonus episode of Molecast. Whew, welcome to Thursday. I, I don't know if it's just the week. I don't know if it's just like a constant feed of news just in my Instagram, in my Twitter, just, just constant news, but I just feel so exhausted. Like today should be Friday. Today sincerely should be Friday. Um, but when I read about the um, winner of this year's 2020 Nobel Prize in Literature, I had to laugh. I mean, I just had to laugh. The Swedish Academy truly has a sense of humor about this year's uh, winners. So indulge me, Molecast audience, as I walk you through the selection that the Swedish Academy has made this week. Monday, we start off with the prize in physiology and medicine. Winner, hepatitis C virus. Mmm, doesn't that sound oddly similar to another virus that we're currently dealing with in 2020? <laughs> Let's fast forward to Tuesday. Tuesday's winner of the Nobel Prize in Physics, black holes. Why do I feel like I'm careening down in the year 2020? A black hole that doesn't seem to end. <laughs> Let's fast forward to Wednesday, Wednesday, yesterday, most exciting day of the week for me because um, the research that was awarded was CRISPR-Cas9. So excited, super happy. However, I was on my Twitter feed this morning and lo and behold, they're using CRISPR as a rapid COVID test. They have used the technology of CRISPR as a COVID test. So just mind blowing. It only takes five minutes. The CRISPR works and you get a, and you get a color, a fluorescence, if you are positive for COVID-19. Now they're still trying to perfect it, but super exciting. And the humor of the Swedish Academy. What is this? What is this? So let's fast forward to today's winner and how this, on how the winner of the 2020 Nobel Prize in Literature fits in with the narrative of 2020, but she absolutely deserves this award. Um, so uh, Louise Gluck, I'm so sorry if I mispronounced her name, uh, was this year's winner of the 2020 Nobel Prize in Literature um, for her unmistakable poetic voice that with austere beauty make individual existence universal. Now, I don't know about you, I am a scientist, I'm an amateur violinist. I am not a poet. However, there are others who do listen to Molecast who are poets. I can think of two right off the top of my head and who also enjoy writing and poetry. So to you, my uh, Molecast audience, I apologize. I am here to simply report on the news and excitement of new Nobel uh, Prize winners in literature um, and to broaden our, our minds but I'm not gonna be able to get into much depth, so I apologize. But I do promise a couple readings from her work at the end of the, of the episode. So let's get into the biography of Louise Gluck. She was born in 1943 in New York City, and she grew up on Long Island. She attended Sarah Lawrence College, which is well known for its writing program, as well as Columbia University, another um, university that is well known for their writing program. Um, Louise Gluck is well known for her poetry's technical precision, sensitivity, and insight into loneliness, family relationships, divorce, and death. If that doesn't sound like 2020, I don't know what is. <laughs> I just, when I read this description of her work, I just, I, I simply said, well played. Well played, Swedish Academy, on the, uh, uh, topics that you selected for this year's winners totally fit the narrative of 2020. Um, something that I also found really interesting too about Louise Gluck's work is that she frequently reuses uh, Greek and Roman myths such as the goddess of Hardis, harvest, I'm sorry, um, Persephone uh, in, in Roman mythology Demeter. Um, and she uses these topics uh, mainly when she talks about loneliness and death. Um, and New York Times critic uh, William Logan described her work as, quote, the logical outcome of a certain strain of confessional verse. Her poems have been dark, 
damage and difficult to avert your gaze from. And I found that it was, it's interesting that especially with everything that's gone on this year in 2020, between the pandemic, social unrest um, that's gone on, not only in the United States, but throughout the world, um, and the uh, tumultuous times that the United States is currently dealing with, with the upcoming uh, November election, the brink of war that's going on um, in uh, in Armenia, it just seems like a very dark time right now. Oh, it is already at war. Thank you. Thank you for the correction. Um, and um, it just seems like an incredibly dark time right now. Um, and reading her poetry, um, because I did go through some of her poems as I wanted to feature a couple on today's Molecast, it's definitely poetry that forces you to put yourself in the narrative. And something that was mentioned a while back um, on the main server, Ray Chen Violin, um, that we were discussing is how we look at music, not only as a first person, you know, as we're playing the music and interpreting the music, but also looking at the music in the terms of the third person, you know, what is the audience perceiving as uh, we are playing this music? And I feel that Louise Gluck uses the same style um, in her poetic writings because she, when she writes, she writes um, by, you know, identifying the emotions that we all face, you know, loneliness, uh, um, death, uh, isolation. And she forces us to put ourselves in that narrative. But when she writes, she writes in such a detached manner that it allows us to examine those emotions somewhat separate. Um, And it's very, very unique. And um, Louise Gluck is the author of numerous books of poetry, most recently in 2014 with Faithful and Virtuous Night. Um, And that book was the winner of the National Book Award. She also wrote a book of poems that span 50 years um, entitled Poems 1962 uh, through 2012 and that uh, book won the LA Times Book Prize. Um, Her first book of poetry was written in 1968 entitled Firstborn and it was recognized um, for its technical control as well as its uh, collection of of disaffected isolated narratives which I described a little earlier um, in the mole cast and um, She and many, many authors describe her writing as um, she writes effectively about disappointment, rejection, loss, isolation, um, that many reviewers frequently refer to her poetry as being bleak or dark. Um, And I, (laughs) I mean, it's, I, I was trying to relate it to things that, you know, we, as you know, a classical music server, a science server could also relate to. Um, And it made me think of the Sibelius Violin Concerto. We've all probably heard Ray play it, not once, probably a million times. I know I have. 2020 denied me so much. (laughs) It denied me that recording and I'm still salty about it. Um, (laughs) Still super salty about it, 2020. You denied me so much this year. You denied me. Um, but when you hear the, um, oh yes. And it also denied the menu in, but don't get me started. We, I could rant about this. I could take a whole mole cast and just talk about everything I've been denied in 2020, but who needs that? We don't need that. <laughs> we don't need this. Um, so, you know, when, when you hear the Sibelius, you, especially the first movement, you know, we hear the first and second violins play the 16th note opening, and then we uh, lead right into the violin solo. And when we hear the violin solo, it sounds bleak. You know, we imagine a snowy scene, a cry for help, and just this passionate, just longing for some sort of interaction. And when I read Gluck's work, and I encourage you to do the same, but um, just a public service announcement for anyone listening to the mole cast um just make sure that you self-care um and check in with yourself there are some of her poems um that are a little darker um there 
and if you're just not in the right mind space, it can lead you to just a, a depressed place. Um, so just make sure you self care before and after um, you read her poetry. Really good though, really, really good stuff. Um, but you know, we listen to the Sepalius and, um, oh, so someone in the chat just asked, what is self care? Um, you know, self care is just making sure that you, you know, check in with yourself. Um, if you're feeling just uh, sad, depressed, make sure you have loved ones that you can talk to about your feelings. Um, if your feelings are um, in a really, really dark place or you feel unsafe either to yourself or others, please contact um, uh, a mental health professional. So um, just being a responsible researcher um, and a responsible friend to all of you. Um, but going back to what I was talking about earlier, you know, we listened to the Sibelius and our initial thoughts are that, you know, it's bleak, it's, it's dark, but you know, it does have this, this passion and this hu human quality that we can identify with. And as I was reading a lot of the reviews for Gluck's work, something that really resonated with me time and time again was that Louise Gluck really spoke in just very plain and simple jargon, wording that others could understand. But the simple wording still led to a major impact um, to anyone who read her work. Um, and I think that's incredibly important to mention because, yeah, my passions are in science and in classical music, but both fields, um, the most powerful and meaningful research or music usually come from something simple and something that everyone can understand. Um, to, earlier on the science server, if you guys check out the memes channel, and I'm just gonna post this, or no, not the memes channel, I'm so sorry. If you check out General, um, there was an amazing tweet um, that I found uh, earlier today that someone posted about um, how scientists essentially um, need to, that I don't think enough scientists understand people and that the job of a scientist and the job of a classical musician is to convey our work better on the general public. Um, it's not for the general public to have to work in order to understand us, both as a scientist and as a classical musician. Um, it's our job as those different fields to help relate our work to the general public in order for the general public to understand its value. Um, how can we understand value if we don't understand what we're what we're interpreting? Um, so I I really identified with Gluck's work and the reviews that I read about Gluck's work um, being simple but yet powerful. Um, and obviously the Swedish Academy also agreed. <laughs> um, uh, Gluck is the fourth woman since uh, 2010 to win the Nobel Prize in Literature, and she is the 16th woman since the prize was first awarded in 1901, which again, I feel like 2020, if 2020 has uh, given us any hope, it's that, hey, at least women are getting recognized for their amazing talents, um, not only in physics and in chemistry, but also in literature. Um, some of the awards that uh, we have seen uh, in the, um, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm just going to take care of that. <laughs> sorry, Jenna. Um, so some of the awards that Gluck has received for her work in 2003, uh, Gluck was named the 12th U.S. Poet Laureate, which is a huge honor. Um, she was then also named as the judge for the Yale series of younger poets um, until 2010. She's won Pulitzer Prize, Bollinger Prizes, um, fellowships from the Guggenheim and Rockefeller Foundations. She won the Wallace Stevens Award in 2008, which is also another major award for um, literature and poetry, as well as the gold medal for poetry from the American Academy of Arts and Letters in 2015. And she was awarded the National Humanities Medal, medal by former President Barack Obama in 2016. Who? Yeah, her list is amazing. Um, and uh, sorry about that. Just need to take care of that. Um, so currently, she is the writer in residence at Yale University, and she lives in Cambridge, Massachusetts. 
And for those of you who tuned in to yesterday's MoCast, no, I could not find any proof that she was awarded a free parking space by Yale University. Yale, if you haven't given her a free parking space, please do so. <laughs> Every Nobel Prize winner who is an academic gets a free parking space. Give her her parking space. <laughs> Hashtag give her a parking space. <laughs> that is all the Nobel Prize is. It, it's a lovely medal. It's $1.1 million and a nice parking space. Give her her park, give her a parking space. <laughs> um, when interviewed um, by CNN, she did say that she wanted to use the prize money to get a vacation home in Vermont. Um, she is 77 years old. She absolutely deserves it um, for all the work that she has done. Now, um, uh, with some of the time remaining in the mole cast today, um, I wanted to read a couple of her works uh, to you. One that is um, kind of going with her dark, more bleak and dark vibe. Um, not too dark. Uh, again, this is mole cast. I'm not that incredibly dark. Um, and then another one that's kind of fitting with the October Halloween season here in the U.S., um, so I was going to go ahead and uh, give you guys some uh, literary works. So first is The Empty Glass uh, by Louise Gluck. <clears throat> I asked for much. I received much. I asked for much. I received little. I received next to nothing. And between, a few umbrellas opened in doors, a pair of shoes by mistake on the kitchen table. Oh, wrong, wrong. It was my nature. I was hard-hearted, remote. I was selfish, rigid to the point of tyranny. <laughs> but I was always that person, even in my early childhood. Small, dark-haired, treaded by the other children. I never changed. Inside the glass, the abstract tide of fortune turned from high to low overnight. Was it the sea? Responding, maybe, to celestial force. To be safe, I prayed. I tried to be a better person. Soon it seemed to me that what began as terror and matured into moral narcissism might have become, in fact, actual human growth. Maybe this is what my friends meant. Taking my hand, telling me they understood the abuse, the incredible bleep I accepted, implying so I once thought, I was a little sick to give so much for so little. Whereas they meant I was good, collapsing my hand intensely, a good friend in person, not a creature of pathos. <laughs> I was not pathetic. I was writ large, like a queen or saint. Well, it all makes sense for interesting conjecture. And it occurs to me that what is crucial is to believe in effort, to believe some goodwill will come of simply trying a good completely untainted by the corrupt initiating impulse to persuade or seduce. What are we without this, whirling in the dark universe, alone, afraid, unable to influence fate? What do we have, really? Sad tricks with ladders and shoes, tricks with salt, impurely motivated recurring attempts to build character. What do we have to appease the great forces? And I think in the end, this was the question that discoured Amageddon. There on the beach, the Greek ships at the ready, the sea invisible beyond the serene harbor, the future lethal, unstable. <laughs> he was a fool thinking it could be controlled. He should have said, I have nothing. I am at your mercy. Great. Um, and then the second poem is uh, All Hallows by Louise Gluck. This one's much shorter. <laughs> Even now, this landscape is assembling. The hills darken. The oxen sleep in their blue yoke. The fields haven't been picked clean. The sheaves bound evenly and piled at the roadside among uh, sing foil as the tooth moon rises. 
This is the barrenness of harvest or pestilence, and the wife leaning out the window with her hand extended, as in payment, and the seeds distinct, gold, calling, come here, come here, little one. And the soul creeps out of the tree. So um, that is some of the poetry uh, that Louise Gluck has written um, during her um, illustrious career as um, a poet and a writer. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> um, if you guys are interested in reading more of her works, I will include a link um, on the mole cast episode that I will upload to YouTube um, as soon as this is over. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you so much, guys. <laughs> I did practice that. <laughs> I kind of butchered the second one, rip. Um, so um, yeah, oh my gosh, it's Thursday. We definitely see a 2020 theme going on with the Swedish Academy. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a bit nervous for tomorrow's Nobel Peace Prize. Um, uh, awardee we'll have to see how it goes <laughs> i'm really hoping for a good one <laughs> i'm sure they'll be amazing um so um yeah we'll see what tomorrow's uh nobel peace prize has in store um tune in tomorrow night 7 p.m uh eastern standard time as we discuss uh the winner of the nobel peace prize and the work that they have done um in order to obtain that prize remember that the peace prize is either for a body of work or for a specific event it can be awarded to an organization or an individual. Um, and with that, I just want to leave you guys. Um, I've been doing quotes all week from all of the Nobel Prize winners. And I feel like this quote is just super powerful. Um, and it's something that not only can be applied to writing, but really in our everyday lives. Um, Louise uh, Gluck says, you have to live your life as if you're going to do original work. Your work will come out of an authentic life. I think that is so powerful. Nothing that you do in this life um, will be original if you don't live your life for yourself and live your life for your dreams. Um, it's the same, it's with music, it's with science, um, anything that we're incredibly passionate about, um, you have to fully live your life if you're going to do original work. Otherwise, how is it original? You're just an imitation. Um, and I found that quote incredibly powerful. Um, and with that, uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in and listening to this bonus episode of Molecast. Um, and I hope to see you again tomorrow. Bye.